everyone. Welcome to our series design lectures, uh, introductions to integrated kitchens. Uh, this is lecture 2.2 cutters. Uh, in these lectures, we're going to dig in the design details of cutters, uh, which is the second component of integrated kitchens. Uh, I'm Yangs, and I'm happy to uh, have this lecture together with you all. Before we move on, I'd like to repost our definition to cutters. So, Cutters is um, a subset to modular cabinets. So for the standard cabinets, it consists of three parts, the door panels, the cutters, and the hardware. Uh, this, uh, the hardware links the cutters and the uh, door scatters, uh, which can include the door slides, the hinges, the, maybe the door lifts. So, Integrated kitchen design is based on the cabinet designs, and each modular cabinet is the smallest functional unit of the kitchens. Uh, it's just like cells to people, atoms to molecule. If we say that we are looking for finished combinations when we are designing door panels, then we are designing cutters. Uh, we are doing dimensional designs. We're going to uh, find out the right size we want. We can this when we are doing the design for cutters, we can determine its dimensions, functions, and part of its structure. So, in fact, different structures um, can undertake different functions, and for example, high cabinets need to have better load bearing capacities, sink cabinets need to perform better in the water resistance, stove cabinets need to uh, have more uh, better ventilations, um, wall cabinets hands on walls and ask for some, some special structures. Um, Based on these requirements, we made small but significant adjustments to uh, each, uh, to the standard structures, and uh, made, uh, made them the uh, specials for each functional unit. Uh, for the kitchens, cutters is the main body in every sense. Although it was covered by the door panels and countertops, uh, receiving the least attention, maybe, and sometimes ignored by our customers, but still, it determines the quality, the performance and uh, even the working life of our kitchens. A well-designed calculus can give considerations to the convenience of use and the division of space. Depending on the height of the users, we provide different cabinet heights and following the user's cooking habits, uh, we provide different kinds of baskets, we provide different kinds of the uh, human humanity designs and Based on the room inputs, our plans can maximize the utilization of our space and make even a small kitchen uh, contains all sorts of functions uh, we need. So today, what we're going to do is that we're going to study cactus by three parts: uh, the cactus materials, the cactus structures, and the uh, basic design criteria of cactus. And so let's get started from the first part. The carcass material. So, before we move on to the carcass materials, we want you to uh, uh, have a basic understanding of what's being used to make our carcass. So, we start from the composition of our carcass panels. Um, it's similar to the what we uh, define as laminate panels um, in the previous door panel sections. Uh, all the carcass materials are um, pr produced this way. We have the base materials, and we have two, two sides of finishes, uh, the front side finish and the back side finish. And the special part of carcass that is uh, relatively thin, the thickness of the base materials is 16 millimeters uh, compared to the uh, standard thickness of our doors. Uh, after uh, covered by finish, its uh, thickness can uh, can um, distribute from the 18 to 21 millimeters. Mm. So we have these two uh, primate uh, base materials, the biker boards, this is the standard options, and the plywood for the premium options. And for uh, back panels, we use uh, thin back, we use three millimeters, the thin back panels, and the base materials is MDF. So 
as we all know that uh, the plywood has a um, better um, waterproof water resistance and a stronger and stronger structure performance but uh, it's kind of uh, relatively expensive so uh, particle boards will be our primary options uh, and this is the standard options uh, we have two combos the standard trackers uh, particle boards with melamine finish and the premium trackers combo is the plywoods uh, in um, the HPL finish which is the laminates and the standard back panels is 3mm MDF uh, in melamine finish its color is the same with the other parts of the carcass materials and when we say it's uh, sometimes we use thick back panels that means we are using the standard carcass uh, in the back panel parts and it's also uh, 16 millimeters so here we list uh, a couple of examples this is the couple of uh, three examples for the standard carcass uh, as you can see here the we have a white um, linen finish, a gray finish, and a light wood green finish. Uh, our combos available, uh, our finish available right now, is, I think it's about uh, six different colors uh, for each uh, for, 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 for each combos. Um, you can check the latest sales menus, or you can go to our design software, Three Homes, and find it out in the product libraries. So to check the the, the latest current available material list. So, I also take a screenshot when I'm doing, making this videos right now. So, from the three home libraries, and uh, this is the the left side is the available um, um, management finish uh, particle board crackers, and the right side is the available plywood uh, base materials in the laminate finish. So as you can see here, the code is a little bit different. Uh, the, all the all the melamine crackers, uh, the, the 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 letters starts with PWGA, and the laminate crackers, uh, the code initials is the PWGF. So the A here stands for melamine, and the F here stands for laminates. And the numbers um, we have we after this stands for the uh, which exact colors uh, it's representing. So for here we got this couple of colors. So to get a quick understanding of this, uh, we provide a this is a small boxes in white colors, small boxes in the gray colors. We got the a uh, light and light wood greens. Um, we got the uh, warm white linen finish. Uh, PWG006, this is only available for the particle boards. And we got this uh, fabric finish in the gray colors, uh, PWG008, and we got a uh, warm yellow uh, fabric finish, the PWG010. So uh, you can check this, go to the libraries, and you can ask us for, uh, for, the, for, us for, the, for the samples of these colors. So, to show your customer what this really looks like. In the past few years, we've eliminated a couple of finished materials, including the red oak and the light gray linen finish. They may be repost, they may be re available based on market demands or may not. In the old days, we need to update with our dealers every single year, and sometimes these symbols can pass to every single designers, uh, and we have to do a lot of work on communications. So for now, in the 3D home design software here, um, we can look up for the available carcass material list. And if a material is on the list, it can be placed orders. It can then be orders. And this um, this works for uh, door materials as well. And with these product libraries, so our communication process has been greatly simplified. So the next part is the carcass structures. So, uh, before we uh, move on the detailed structures of uh, each of these panels, uh, we would like to get a basic understanding about what are the common, the small fittings inside a carcass. So, uh, we got this, uh, we start from the connections tools. Uh, we use the wood plug plus the 
uh, KMM connecting poles, we connect panels, we connect the strips, and for the for the shelves in it, uh, we got this adjustable shelf support. So as you notice, know, uh, cabinets um, has more like a boxes without the without the surface, which is a door. It does not include the door, so you only have five surfaces: the top, the bottom, uh, the left and right, and the back sides. So here is the ca base cabinet assembles. We do not have a top top panels, but we have the left side panels, we have the right side panels, we have the bottom panels, we have the back panels, and we got these shelves. Usually, the shelves is adjustable shelves. Uh, it's not fixed uh, on the cabinets. You can adjust the size. You can move it a little bit. Upwards, yeah, make it move it a little bit down. Um, as you can see here, is we offer uh, three um, adjustable shelf holes here, so that you can uh, maybe move the shelves, uh, adjust the shelf, shelf location as you wish. And on the front parts, we got these aluminum rails to uh, to increase the strength of the whole cabinets. And we got this aluminum rail and its connector. And below the cabinets, uh, we got these adjustable legs. Uh, there will be four legs installed on the uh, four corners, uh, near the four corners of the cabinets. And it can adjust the height of the cabinet by a little bit. And uh, so that you can, even when the floor is not flat, you can still uh, hold the, all the of the cabinets in the same horizontal lines. And as you can see, we got this hose right here. Uh, we don't leave these holes open, uh, we don't let water go in. Um, we use these system hole inserts to uh, cover the unused holes. So uh, when it's, you need to use these holes, we can remove these inserts and uh, adjust the shelf locations. And when you don't need to uh, for some unused holes, you can use this uh, system hole inserts to cover it. And for the last part, this is a vent. This is the uh, this is when uh, we use for the uh, stove cabinets. It can uh, it can be installed on the bottom panels and to increase the um, the ventilation um, speed. So you let more air goes in. So it's not hard to imagine that cabinets in similar locations should have a similar type of structures. So therefore. According to different cabinet positions, uh, we, ca we categorize kitchen cabinets into three big groups, the, which is the base cabinets, the wall cabinets, and the high cabinets. So matching with the base, uh, they are matching with the base cutters, the wall cutters, and the high cutters. So um, since the door panels and the hard wheels are in difference for these cabinets, so the uh, the structural difference are the only things matters for to deploy the these cabinets. So understand the structure here. We can combine these cabinets uh, according to different space, different layouts, and we need and when it's needed, we can even do the modifications on the structures. So how do we define these cabinets? The high cabinets and the wall cabinets are pretty easy. The wall cabinets are those hand on walls. And high cabinets are those uh, freestanding tall cabinets. And for the base cabinets, uh, they, they're defined by countertops. They will, we are going to put a countertop above it, and if not, that's not that's another case. Um, so the reason why is, uh, uh, we are going we, we do not have our top panels here uh, is just because we are going to put a Countertop above this, and we'll explain this a little bit later. So, for now, uh, for the base cabinets, they have a countertop above it and the adjustable legs behind below it. And the same for the high cabinets, uh, they have a four adjustable legs for each modular cabinet. Okay, now we move on to the uh, basic structure of each cabinet. Okay. The first one, the base cabinet. The base cabinet, this is the um, front view of the base cabinet uh, when I remove the door. Um, and I have hidden the, uh, the hose of the, the system hose and the hinges hose. 
So, as you can see here, we start from the structure of the side panels, uh, its relations with the bottom panels and the top parts. So, as you can see here, we got these side panels covering the bottom and top. And this is the standard structure for the base cabinets. And as you can see here, we do not have a top panels. Instead, we go for the front. In the front parts, we have a front aluminum strip to strengthen the structure. Uh, in the back sides, uh, and the, the and we got the wood strips right here. And if you can take a look at the side structure view here, so when I'm hiding the the, the white side panel right here, you can see uh, there are one, two wood strips to connect the uh, to connect and hold the uh, structure strands of the back side of the cabinets. So and uh, between them we got this uh, three millimeters thick back panels and the two wood strips. So this is the standard structure for the base cabinets. And for the shelves here, as you can see here, it's not in the same depth with the uh, it's not in the same depth with the side panels. It's actually twenty millimeters shorter, so uh, this can uh, can help. This makes them look nicer and help people's uh, easy book space. And for the wall cabinets, um, the big difference uh, is that it got the top panels here, uh, but it's still in the similar structures with the base cabinets. The side panels, as you can see here, the left side panels and the right side panels, they still covering the top the, and the bottom parts. And still we have the 3mm back panels, and we got these wood strips. So for now, since we have a uh, full top panels right here, so we do not have a front aluminum rails, we do not have a, a wood strips on the front sides, but we got the but we got the wood strips on the bottom sides. And depends on different heights. If the uh, if the wall cabinets gets higher, uh, we're going to put more uh, wood strips uh, maybe in the middle. Maybe one in the middle, maybe two in the middle, to, uh, to, 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 to increase the whole cabinet strength. So this is the uh, base structure for base and uh, cabinets and wall cabinets. They are similar in this part. They are both side panels covers the bottom and top. And it is this case that differs them from the, uh, the structure of the high cabinets. Since for the high cabinets right here, we got the bottoms and the top panels covering the side panels. Okay, so this is for better load bearings. Uh, as you can see here, is, uh, imagine we put several wall cabinets together uh, with the side panels covering bottom and top. Uh, its overall looking will be more beautiful. And for the uh, high cabinets part, since we have to increase the load bearing capacities, actually we have uh, have to use some. Placing in here. Still, we have the top panels and we have the 3mm back panels here. Then we got the multiple wood strips right here. Uh, for example, I got 5 here for a standard uh, 21 mm height uh, high cabinets. So, this depends on height. Uh, if the height increases, then maybe more wood strips. Uh, if the height decreases, there will be less wood strips. Okay, this is the standard structures of the high cabinets. Alright, so we're back to the top cap top panel parts or the top parts of the base cabinets and now we want to uh, take a look at why is the uh, why is it the structure like this? So the first one is our standard structures. We got this aluminum sheep structure, aluminum sheep in the front, wood chips plus the the two wood strips, one up here and one down here, plus the three millimeter back panels to hold the uh, to hold the old, old structures. And the second available design is the whole panels. Uh, instead of going for these two uh, strips, we're going for the whole panels right here. The reason why we don't use always use the whole panel is that uh, we want the we we do not want a gap. We do not want a dead gap between the Base cabinets and the cockers uh, to the to the countertop. So uh, the 
low dust or low waters or uh, bacteria will be we will stay in that part uh, and this will make the uh, countertop back parts easy to clean even if some water goes to the back parts of it okay so actually it's, we, uh, we do not uh, we do not recommend to always use the whole panels only recommend to uh, using some special case uh, for example uh, the customer really wants the whole panels or the or some case that uh, we need to support uh, another cabinet about it okay and the third structure is the structure uh, especially for North American regions this is the wood strip structures so instead of going for uh, an aluminum strip it goes for uh, a wood strip here as well and this structure installs the front wood strips and the back wood strips horizontally so as you can see here the wood strips here uh, on the back side is installed vertically and for here it is installed horizontally why is it this way since uh, in this structure is the the cabinets uh, or the whole cabinets will be more easy to carry. You can hold the front parts in one hand and hold the, uh, uh, the back parts of with the other hands and it is uh, pull these cabinets up and, and move it. So this is a structure designed to save uh, intent to save the labor cost. Uh, since in the North American region as we, as we all know the labor cost is pretty expensive and they would prefer to have their cabinets well installed in China uh, they were installed in our factories and, and ship to them in the whole cabinet part uh, and this is called the install package and all you need to do is to put the cabinets in the right uh, in the right locations on the job sites and this will save them a lot of time and um, for, for sure is the uh, since you installed it uh, the, the, the whole warrants will be more and the transportation cost will be higher and the uh, price for us will be higher and normally in the northern in the uh, southeast regions or in the African regions uh, we, like, we recommend to use for the go for the flat packaging and you don't need to use, uh, worry too much about the labor cost on the job size instead uh, we want to save some cost uh, save some transportation costs so with that we go for the fact packaging and uh, normally we use the standard structure right here. Okay, this is the top panel part. This is the top part of the base cabinets. Why is it only for the base cabinets? Since for uh, since for the other cabinets, the wall cabinets and the high cabinets, we always have these four panels. Okay, so for base cabinets, the only reason that we are not using this uh, is not for is not because we are saving materials. Is that we just don't want to have a that space between the base cabinets and the countertop. Okay, so uh, next part we go to the uh, go for the seven different cases for the back panel. So normally we go for these structures as we just mentioned a, a couple of times. Uh, we go for the three millimeter back panels plus two wood strips uh, installed vertically, uh, one above and one down here. This is a standard structure. And when it's needed, we can also switch the back parts, back structures to the to this ones, which is the big back panel. Okay. As you can see, the big back panels right here. Is, uh, when there is a big back, back panel here, is, we do not have any more any wood strips anymore. Okay, that that will just be the panel itself. And for the third case, uh, we have no back panels. Uh, this is for some special case that, uh, for example, there's a plug here. You don't want to uh, bring back panels here to block it. And for example, it's when uh, there's an, an electrical appliance is put uh, somewhere here. And uh, or, the, or you install a sink above it. Uh, you don't want the back panels to block it. And in this case, there will be only two wood strips here, okay, with no back panels. But as you can see here, the back panels here is not uh, holding the the, 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 the strengthen poppers, so it's okay, it's totally fine to remove it. Okay, so 
but knowing the basic uh, varieties of the of the side panels, the basic structures of the available things we can do on the top panels and on the back panels. We then move on to the available cabinets. The common cabinets, uh, type of cabinets of the base cabinets, wall cabinets, and the high cabinets. And we're going to see uh, what's the difference of it uh, to serve different functions. Okay, as you can see here, these are the uh, some common base cabinets here. And let me explain this uh, really quick so that I can get a, a full picture of what's available. So, we start from the door cabinets and the drawer base cabinets. So, for the door base cabinets, we produce the single door base cabinets, the double door base cabinets, and based on requires, based on demands, we can we can set these uh, doors to the link doors, uh, to the small drawers, plus doors, uh, to the uh, to those kind of solid finds. And for drawer base cabinets, this is the symbols we offer: one drawer cabinets, two drawer cabinets. Three drawer, four drawers, and so on. And for the the two key functions of uh, of the kitchens, uh, the stove and the sink, the cooking and the cleaning part of the kitchens, uh, we offer these two uh, special cabinets to serve these special functions. Uh, to have the sink or the stove installed above it. So we got the stove based cabinets with vents, and we got this sink based cabinets. Uh, with special back uh, bottom panels, and besides this, uh, uh, the 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 majority part parts of the base cabinet, we offer the uh, multifunctional basket base cabinets, and the other core base cabinets, we offer the stove plus heat base cabinet. So sometimes it's, instead of going for the two doors, we can also go for two equal drawers. We offer blind corner base cabinets. Of uh, the appliances based cabinets and so on. So, for now, so let's take a look at uh, each part of it. What is the structure? What it looks like? Uh, what do we need to pay attention to when we are designing this? Okay. So, we start from the single or double door uh, based cabinets. So, as you can see here, this is a single base cabinet, this is a uh, double door based cabinet. The one thing, the first thing we have noticed is the shelf. Uh, by default, the other shelves are adjustable shelves, but it can be switched to fixed shelves uh, if the customer wants to. Use. And uh, and the depth, as we just mentioned, is not the same. It's not the same depth with the with the uh, side panels. It's twenty millimeter short, so it's kind of twenty millimeter inward reduction to to a wide. Uh, Cracking to uh, make this look nicer. And for this one, the door is opening leftwards, so we call this left opens. And for this one, uh, we call this right opens. And this works for all kinds of other cabinets as well. Uh, as long as the door is opening leftwards, uh, it's, it's called left opens. And when it's opening rightwards, it's called right opens. And if we put a cabinet, if we put the door out uh, straight, uh, then sometimes we call it straight open, sometimes we call it side open. Okay. So for the single, uh, for the uh, standard uh, base cabinet, we got these two uh, structures. The first one is the standard structure, and as you can see here, this is the left cabinet right here. Uh, the standard structure is looks like this. And you can see the wood sheets behind it. You can see the aluminum. The, the aluminum strips, and as you can see here, is, uh, the shelf is a little bit shorter. The side panel is covering the bottom panels, and uh, for Southeast Asians, we got this uh, aluminum edge ceilings for the shelves to make it look nicer. And besides this, the standard. Uh, structure is meshing is designed to be meshed with the uh, doors with the handles openings and if you don't want the doors uh, and uh, with four handles sometimes we use the this 
conceive handle design. Uh, this is the both. Uh, uh, in Opine, we provide the standards uh, conceive aluminum bar handles for the base cabinets. It's it can be called easily called KO board, and its standard code is TWWKO02. It's a concealed aluminum bar handles, replacing the aluminum strips right here. And as you can see here, it's, um, instead of installed um, cowards by the tube side panels, the KO4 here, the KO4 bar handles here, as you can see the bar handle right here, uh, cuts a little bit holes, uh, cuts a little bit holes on the upper corners, upper front corner of the tube uh, side panels and installed right here. Okay, in this way, we have the door panels also made a little bit shorter, and now we can put our hands in this shut space and pull the door out. Okay, for the structure like this, we also got a similar structure, and let's take a look at the details of them. So, this is the left one is the KO4 bar handles, and the right one is another design similar design to this, it's called the door material strips. Oh, we start from the K04 bar handles right here. And as you can see here, uh, if we take a uh, clear, uh, um, if we take a close look at this, uh, you can see the, the door panel is a little bit shorter than it should be, a little bit shorter than the cabinets, but it's still over the, the bottom parts of the K04 bar handles here. So, it forms a nice gap here, so uh, the, 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 you can pull your hands here and pull the cap, the door out. The same logic. Sometimes they people still not want their bar handles in different colors. They want this to be, uh, be in the same door material as well. So this is why we uh, have this door material strips plus 45 degree cut door panels. So for here, the door material strips it does not have a nice J shape right here. It does not have a nice uh, counter L shape right here. It's just a uh, straight panel. So if we, if the door panel is, is still straight here, uh, we do not have the gap to open it. So now we need to cut the door panel by 45 degree edge cards. And now we have this nice little gap right here. And we now have the bar handles in door materials shapes as well. Okay. A quick note is that for the 45 degree card, it's not available for all types of materials. It's available for about three materials in, in measurements, and for and it's available for all materials for lacquer. Okay. So for the drawer base cabinets right here, is, uh, we offer the four different kinds of uh, drawer base cabinets: the one drawer base cabinets, two drawer base cabinets, three drawer base cabinets, and the four drawer base cabinets. We do not have the four drawer best base cabinet models, unfortunately. It's. And for each of them, uh, we can either choose the standard door, uh, or either, or, or we can also choose the cabinet structure uh, with the K04. As you can see here, is, this one is replaced by uh, the K04 bar handles like here. Uh, usually, we do not have the one drawer base cabinets. Uh, standing freestanding on its own since uh, the drawer shouldn't be that big. Usually it's combined with an open cabinet sometimes and open cabinets place above it. So we, now we're going to use the whole panels, uh, the whole roof, whole top panels right here uh, since we're going to place the open cabinets above it. And the open cabinets above it are uh, combined with the uh, one drawer cabinets in uh, classic designs. Okay, the two drawer base cabinet is pretty com is uh, pretty common in all kinds of kitchens, and the uh, three drawer cabinets as well. So for the three drawer base cabinets here, we got the two different K04 structure. The first one used two K04 handles, and the second one used three K04 handles. So as you can see here, the second drawer here is actually opened uh, through the bottom part, and for the if we have Three bar handles here instead. Uh, we're going to have the one bar handles for each drawer, so we do not have to share the bar handles. Uh, same for the four drawer base cabinets right here. Okay, this is the uh, a 
uh, standard structures, uh, a side view uh, for the uh, structure view for the drawer based cabinets. As you can see here, is for the standard structures, it's in difference with a, uh, a standard door cabinet uh, with no shelves in it. Okay, we just remove the shelf in it and other parts stays all the same. And for the K04 structures here, uh, the things doesn't get much complete complexer, yes, doesn't get much more complex. Uh, instead, we just replace the top ones, the top aluminum rail, uh, the top aluminum strip to the bar handles right here. And we and more than this, we cut another uh, gap in the middle part and install the second uh, uh, bar handles. And if needed, we can uh, cut the third one, the fourth gap, and install the more bar handles right here if we want. Okay, so that will be matched with the maybe three drawer based cabinets or four drawer based cabinets. Same logics for the pull out based cabinets right here. Uh, the standard structure uh, is just a it's just a standard cabinets with no shelves in it. And the KO4 structures uh, is just by replacing the uh, aluminum strips to the bar handle. And for the two functional, the functional cabinets right here, the sink and the stove based cabinets. We start from the sink based cabinets, it has similar, it has several uh, special shades. So the standard structure here is, as you can see, uh, we do not have a thin back panels and we do not have any shelves. Uh, and for the KO4 structures, uh, we, we replace the uh, aluminum strips to the bar handles as well. So for the sink cabinets, usually we have no shelves uh, because we got to install the big things right here and we have got to have the drainer systems so we have no place for the shelf. And usually we have no back panels uh, since um, the, 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 the water cube needs to go, uh, usually goes behind, behind it. So, and when it's really needed, for example, we have a Sink back panels on the island. No, no, no. We have a sink base cabinet on the island. What do you do? If you really need a back panels, then instead of going for the thin back panels, we go for the uh, thick back panels. Okay. So actually, the thin back panels is not allowed for the uh, for the sink base cabinet. And the third part is the bottom panels. It got a special water bottom panels. It's a metal finish bottom panels with stronger water resistance. And the fourth one uh, is kind of an, an addings uh, and adding accessories. Uh, we have the two uh, waterproof sheets uh, covering the gaps between the bottom panels and the side panels, which is these two parts. Okay, these two parts. All right. For the stove based cabinets, uh, usually you have the, these two, we are using these two different models. The first one is the two door stove cabinets, and the second one is the two eco pull out stove cabinets. We go for the dishes pull outs on the front parts, and we go for the uh, wheel pull outs uh, on the second, on the second uh, part right here, on the lower parts right here. Okay, so, the structure of the stove based cabinet is the same with the uh, door based cabinets. The only difference is that we got a vent mesh installed on the bottom panels. Okay, so this will uh, allow the water to go in from the back panels and go into the whole space right here. All right, the last part is the appliance based cabinets. So. Uh, the pine space cabinets usually we uh, have the uh, stove or the dishwashers uh, integrated in the base cabinets. So the, the key point is that uh, to, to not block in the line transportations, we do not have any back panels right here. And if there is a drawer, uh, then we have the thick back panels on the other parts. Uh, for example, on the back parts right here, we're going to have a thick back panels. Okay. These are the two cases of appliances cabinets. It's either the appliances itself 
or it's a combined, uh, combining the appliances and a small drawer. Okay. Okay, the last part is the counter base cabinet. Uh, it's actually the same structure for all base counter cabinets. So, for the counter cabinets, you're going to have, you're uh, going to ignore the fillers. We're going to take a look at the fan wheel right here. We start from the fan wheel right here. If you remove the fillers and the door, uh, the rest parts will be my cutters. Okay, I got a left panel, I got a right panel, right side panels. I got part of the front panels. This will be covered by the other cabinets. Okay, so this is why we call this a blind corner cabinets. And we got this thin back panels right here. And this is the normal structures of a blind corner base cabinet. And as you can see from the back part of this, okay, so we got this uh, carcass materials. We got this fillers. This is a fillers here to help install the doors and to help adjust the uh, locations, the position of the blind corner base cabinets. Uh, we do not want any cutters parts available or uh, visible, so we use a filler to have uh, a 100 uh, fixed filler right here. All right, and uh, this is the filler and the door and the uh, in back panels. For the KO4 structures, the difference is that uh, below the, behind the pillars right here, we're going to uh, have a uh, small vertical panels right here uh, to help install the KO4. Okay, this is the common structures for the base cabinets. A couple of different uh, options for the common cabinets. Another key common option is that we got this lazy system basket here and the 100 degrees turning basket cabinet right here. Okay, so this is our standard corner door cabinet. So we use the 180 degree things, and for the table four structures, we go for the standard hinge, and we're going to have a small vertical panels behind the little pillar right here. And for the lazy system basket here, we do not need any hinge. The basket will uh, connect, uh, will be installed on the carcass, and part of it will be installed on the door. So it will connect the carcass and the door. This will automatically apply the thick back panels, and the weave must be greater than 900 millimeters to install the lazy susans. Uh, the same, the other options requirements are right here. The door weave needs to be greater than 400 millimeters, or this uh, cross cannot be pulled out. And the second one is this 100 degree turning basket. Uh, this is kind of similar with our standard blind corner cabinet models right here. Uh, the weave needs to be uh, hot, greater than 900, 900 millimeters, and the door width needs to be greater than 400, 450 millimeters. Okay, so still the same. In the old days, we need to worry about this a lot, but with the new 3D home software, we are not going to worry about this too much. If it's not allowed by our factories, the software will tell you, hey, there's an error here. When it's checking for errors, when you, you, and you must go for the uh, error checkings before you place orders. So you can easily find out all this, uh, all, all our uh, dimension requirements. So next part, we move for the common wall cabinets. The wall cabinets is even more simple, uh, since we do not have uh, many structure difference in the wall cabinets. Uh, sometimes we have the, a couple of door difference. Uh, for wall cabinets, we have all kinds of glass doors, uh, aluminum frame glass doors, the wood frame glass doors, the lift up doors, the single door, the hinge doors. But they are all using the same structure, same standard structure. Okay. Uh, the only different cases is the maybe the corner cabinets right here, and the uh, the range wood cabinet is not listed here. So we're going to take a look at it in a few seconds. So the common wood cabinets are the single door wood cabinets, the double door wood cabinets, and for the lift up doors, we have this uh, single lift up 
double lift up and the pipe lift up. Okay, so this is only about the doors and the door fittings. So for the tractor parts, they're all the same. So here we got a standard uh, structure for wall cabinets. Uh, we got a wall handles for the base cabinet to help it match, to help the whole uh, kitchen in the same styles. We also have a ball handles for the wall cabinets. Okay, this one is installed on the front parts of the uh, bottom panels. So it will replace the front parts of the bottom panels. And as you can see here, in the very front sides, uh, we installed, we cut a little parts of the bottom panels and we installed the uh, KO5 hand ball handles on it. So as you can see, the red parts right here, we replaced part of the bottom panels. And now we got it. This little gap below this, so we can pull the doors out. So, this is the basic few structures of the wall cabinets. This is the standard structures uh, with the uh, inward reduction shelf, the thin back panels, left right side panels, the bottom panel, top panels, and the default shelf. Uh, all the second ones, we go for the KO4 ball handles. Uh, the other parts are still the same. The only part of the bottom panel is replaced by the KO5, uh, which is the PWWK009 Okay, another key point of the uh, of the wall cabinets is the number of shelves it has. So, based on different heights, we have a we have a standards uh, to help to help you uh, divide the space. So for cabinets um, below 500 millimeters, the cabinet heights below this, there will be no shelves. Uh, if there's, it's, this is our standard height, uh, 720 to or 760 to, you have one shelves. And if it goes above 900, there will be two shelves. If it goes more, there will be more shelves. And notice that when the height is above 1000 millimeters, Feedback panels is required to uh, to help to hold the strength of the overall structure. Okay, so this is not the a fixed stuff, so you can always add extra shelves to it if you want. For example, you can have two shelves for the this one, no problems. It's just extra cost. Um, but for and for this, uh, is our the number of shelves we recommend. So if the space is too small, it's not good to. Uh, it doesn't have to provide enough room to uh, to store stuff. But if it is if it is too big, uh, that will cause the waste of space. So let's take a look at the range tool wood cabinets right here. This is the our standard models for the range tool wood cabinets. So we got this. It's actually it's actually two cabinets right here. Okay, it's just the uh, have the. Each of these door panels uh, extends to the middles, and so that we have a nice blank space on here to allows for uh, allows the, the the smoke tube to come this way. Okay, it's the range root structure of the range root wall cabinets. And another structure right here is the uh, is the uh, structure is uh, based on the. Uh, based on the standard structures, but it serves the, as a similar function. This is the microwave wall cutters. Building microwave. Okay, so we have the front parts, uh, two doors, and the bottom parts is uh, kind of like a uh, open cabinet, and we put a uh, microwave in. So this is a common structure. is more uh, common in the North American regions, and for their regions, the standard depth is uh, three or five millimeters, then for the twelve inch. And the standard width is 900 millimeters. Uh, actually, it's the size of crackers uh, depends on the size of microwave. Uh, if the if the customers buy the microwave, uh, integrated microwave, and want to install it, our entry is always no problems. We will we adjust the cabinet uh, dimensions to help you uh, put that in. Okay, now we move on to the last part of the cabinet structures, the common high cabinets. Okay. 
So over here is we got this common high cabinets including the uh, then the door cabinets, the single or double door high cabinets. We have this uh, poor baskets uh, high cabinets. We got the uh, appliances high cabinets. Either one appliances or multiple appliances. And we got this refrigerators high cabinets right here. Okay, let's take a look at the structures. So for the standard structures right here, it's pretty simple. We got the top panels, bottom panels, uh, the shelves right here, and we got the thin back panels and the wood chips and they were in the uh, back parts. And for the KO4 structures, uh, it's the only difference is that it made a little gap right here to install the on the side panels to help install the the the, the the KO4 and they made this uh, the bottom panels a little bit shorter uh, to, to form a gap right here to help you to allow the hands to come in to pull the doors out okay this is the KO4 structure so for the appliances high cabinets this includes the microwave cabinets the, 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 the oven cabinets the microwave oven cabinets uh, stuff like this so the standard structure is that uh, there's no back panels for the appliances parts, the microwave and the oven parts. There's no uh, appliances. There's no uh, back panels behind it. And for the other parts to help improve the strength of the cool cabinets, uh, there will be feet back panels. Okay. So imagine we're going to put a microwave and oven right here. So there will be no back panels on these two parts, but there will be feet back panels on the other parts. Okay, so the same logic for KO4 is just cutting a, a small bar right here. Uh, for the, the other parts is still the same. We have the feedback panels. Uh, we got the, this uh, parts right here. And then we're going to cut a U shaped parts uh, on the top panels and the bottom, pan bottom panels. As you can see here, this is 50 by 50 is left. And we're going to cut this U shape parts right here to help uh, to improve the air transportation okay this happens for all the appliances high cabinets including the uh, appliances middle cabinets and the uh, and the and, and the and the fridge cabinets okay so uh, instead of the difference from the high cabinets uh, imagine we're going for middle cabinets for example the high is Probably 1500 millimeters, and for the top parts of this, uh, we're going to put a red mesh installed on the top panels instead of going for the U shaped cut. Okay, the last structures we want to mention is the open cabinets, and the open cabinets for sure, the materials is usually the same with the door materials, and the structure is the standard structures. Uh, the standard base cabinet structure, the standard wall or high cabinet structures. The only difference is that it now all of them has a thick back panels. Okay, the number of shelves here is a flex pose. Uh, you can set this to two, you can set this to one, you can set this to zero. It's up on use. And we can install middle vertical panels right here. For example, I can install middle vertical panel right here. I can install right here. And on the other place, I can install multiple vertical panels right here. And another point I want to mention is that for the open wall cabinets, uh, we can sometimes uh, install a, choose the uh, design that says black aluminum lot. Okay, then there will be a black aluminum lot installed on the front of each panel. Okay, that can really help you organize the stuff, uh, especially for the wall open cabinets and prevents stuff from falling down. Okay. Okay. Now he here is we want to move on to our last part of the calculus. There's some basic design criteria. Uh, this includes the standards for cabinet size and some other design structures. Okay. So the standard this cabinet dimension here is uh, we got to start from the base cabinets. Uh, the standard depth for base cabinets and high cabinets is five sixty. And for uh, some North American regions and for Australia regions, the 
sometimes we use the second module, so here's uh, sometimes we go for the six engines, and this is also the standard cabinet step. And for the height here, uh, standard height for base cabinet is 660 or 720 or 6, 762. The 720 here is the most used one. Uh, sometimes if the user is a little bit short, we can go for the 660 here, but this is not really common. Um, for the 760Q2 here, uh, this is another inch, uh, inch scales numbers. It's actually the 30 inch. Uh, so when it transforms to millimeters, it becomes 762. So it's the same for wall cabinets. Our standard depth is 330, but uh, for North American regions, they usually prefer the chop inch, uh, which goes for 305. And for the height here, the standard wall cabinet highs uh, range from 450, 720, 900 and more. So the standard range for cabinet weave is from 150 to uh, 12, uh, it's actually 12,000 millimeters. So the recommended size for single door panels. So if you go for one door, you can follow this size. Uh, for base cabinets, you know, maybe uh, 400 to 600. You can go for 400, 450, 500s, uh, 550s, and 600s. Uh, these are all good numbers. Do not go for something like the 407s, the 408s. Go for round numbers. Uh, that's good for us, that's good for you. Easy. Make your life easy. And for the wall cabinets, uh, for wooden dots, we recommend the size to be uh, 300 to 450. Uh, even though we can move, make the door panels really small, but uh, a really small cabinet uh, has a really small uh, inner space and there will be not be convenient to put a lot of uh, normal stuff in it and sometimes the, uh, the the weave for 150s, the weave below 300s uh, for some side pulling baskets okay so for some sectioning baskets the 150 is the, just the right size for to the sectioning bottles but for not good for uh, the other stuff. Okay, so and for the whole wall cabinets, uh, we recommend to uh, design the weave to be less or it goes to 900, or otherwise it would be too heavy to install. It would be too heavy to carry, it would be too heavy to um, nail it on a wall, uh, things like this. So always consider is it, uh, is it uh, easy for installations? If not, Maybe adjust the design. Okay, uh, next part we want to go for the uh, applications of the feedback panels, uh, which is uh, also is a common uh, varieties of our uh, standard structures. The first one is the lazy Susan cabinets. Uh, it needs these panels to be a uh, feedback panels to install this lazy Susan. So uh, by default, the, these cabinets will be the in the feedback panels, we don't need to worry about this too much. And the second part, sometimes you always need to set this by ourselves is that the, uh, when the wall cabinet height is above uh, a thousand millimeters, we got to use the feedback panels uh, to make the structure strong, uh, strong enough. The third part is to have installing a fake door. So this is really common when we are making an island. So we got to attach Big doors on the other sides or the side panels on, on the back part as well. To install these big doors, uh, we need these back panels to all be thick back panels as well. Otherwise, we cannot uh, nail it to the thick back panels right here. Okay, so for example, this is a standard uh, island's um, front view. So this is the front side. Uh, we have hidden all the door panels, and this one are the big doors. Okay, so we got this one, two, three uh, cabinets, and they are all in thick back panels. Okay. The fourth case is, is what we mentioned the uh, for the appliances high cabinets. Uh, the 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 locations behind these appliances are have are having um, no back panels, and for the other parts there will be uh, thick back panels. In the other cases, when the customers ask for it, we can go for these designs. And this is really common in Australia markets. And 
kind of weird on the other market. Like, I would say not common in Southeast Asia, not common in, in North America. Yeah. Okay, so there are a couple of other common designs here you might want to take a look at it. And the first one is the side panels card to uh, we want to cut the side panel lower to make it away from the stove or sink. So, for example, if we go for a 900 millimeter uh, sink cabinet, or we go for a 1200 millimeter sink. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the, the side panels will be conflict with the sink or the stove, uh, synergic for stove. Uh, now we have, now we need to cut the side panels lower to make it away from the stove or sink. Uh, note that if, we, if we've got some adjacent cabinets right here, uh, we also need to cut the adjacent cabinets. Okay, so we, you don't just cut the, the, the one side panels right here. You also need to cover, uh, cut the, for example, you cut the right side panels right here, and need to cut the left side panels for the, for the adjacent cabinets right here. Okay. And the other cases is to cut the corners to your white pillars. Uh, so now we've got a back left cars. Back right cards or the back center cards, it depends. Uh, we don't really recommend this, but if it's needed, we offer this. Okay, the other cases does not need to be drawn out. Uh, the other cases are extra layers, you can just set it to extra layers. Uh, the other case, and one other case is embedded light strips on the side panels. Uh, you can see this on our samples a lot, and it's actually just you can easily select it on a software. Uh, just click yes, and then and then there will be light ships installed on the side panels. Okay, this is everything for our uh, packers parts, uh, including the uh, the packers materials and the structures and the uh, basic design ideas of packers. So if you have any questions, you can contact us. And thank you for listening. And uh, I'm Yang. I will see you in the next one.